In this video, I'll be explaining what is simplex table. So to explain this simplex table, let us consider an example of the linear programming problem and I'm considering maximization of z 2x1 plus 3x2 subject to x1 minus x2 less than or equal to 2 minus 3x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 4 and both the decision variable are non-negative. So the first prerequisite to write the simplex table is that write the LPP into standard form. So in the standard LPP, we have the constraint as equality. So add a slack variable equal to 2 minus 3x1 plus x2 plus s2 equal to 4. And because the slack variable are involved, so their cost in the objective function is 0. So it is 0 times s1 and 0 times s2. And now the decision variables including the slack variable are all greater than or equal to 0. Now as the simplex table follow the approach of basic solution. So here I am writing first basic variable. So this is basic variables. And left to the basic variable I will write CB. So CB is cost of basic variable. Then on this side, I'll write all the decision variable involved in the linear programming problem. At this moment, we have x1, x2, s1, s2. And then we write the solutions of all these decision variable that are currently in my basis. Then here I write the z row. So this is the z variable. And here this is the value of z. So this z I have written here the variable that is the objective function variable. And here I'm going to write always the value of the z. Here we write initial BFS. So obviously z at this initial BFS is always a 0. We can see that whenever we have written these as basic variable from the problem, you can see that the current A matrix is 1, minus 3, minus 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. This is the A matrix, coefficient matrix. And this corresponds to x1 column, x2 variable, s1 and s2. The order of the matrix is 2 cross 4. So that means in the basis matrix, I can consider any two columns. So currently we have considered this as 2 cross 2 in the basis matrix. If I choose this as the basis matrix, so the system which is Ax equal to B is reduced to B x B equal to B. And since B is identity, x B is straight away the right hand side. So that is why initial BFS we are not solving. This is 2, 4. So this is the first basic variable. This is the second basic variable. And now we fill out the entries here and these are called scalars. And to find the scalar, we have to write the coefficient matrix A as the linear combination of these independent vectors. That means that there are four columns in the matrix. So for example, I have the first column as 1 minus 3. This I need to write as a linear combination of the current basis so current basis that means corresponding to s1 we have this column corresponding to second ba basic variable we have this either you can see it from the table or you can see from the current basis matrix so because these are 1 0 0 1 it is very easy choice for us so this is 1 into 1 0 minus 3 into 1 0 so if i make this choice so that constraint is satisfied 1 minus 3 is same as this combination which is written on the right hand side so now these scalar which I have written here 1 and minus 3 these will be appearing here 1 minus 3 similarly if I want to write this column that is a2 so again I will have minus 1 into the first column plus 1 into the second linearly independent column so again these entry minus 1 1 they will go in the table so here it is minus 1 1 and so on for the third column that is a3 which is 1 0 now you can see this is already repeated here so this is 1 plus this value has to be 0 and we can look at for the last column that is a4 this is 0 into 1 0 plus 1 into 0 1 so these scalars 1 0 i write here and these scalar last 0 1 that i will write here so these are scalars so that is why our initial choice of the basis is so appropriate that we don't have to find out. In fact, now by this procedure, you can understand that these scalar turn out to be the same column once we have selected B matrix as the identity matrix. So the first table is always very simplified. You can simply look at the coefficient of the decision variable and fill out this first column. Now, what are the entries that I need to write here? 
this is what I call it as Zj minus Cj. So to find Zj minus Cj, I need to calculate now the Z1 minus C1, Z2 minus C2, Z3 minus C3 and Z4 minus C4. So corresponding to each, I need to calculate this expression. Now this expression Zj minus Cj is called as net evaluation or the relative evaluation. And to calculate Zj minus Cj, I'll multiply Cb multiplied by scalars minus the original cost. Say for example, I want to calculate now Z1 minus C1. And if I want to calculate Z1 minus C1, which I will substitute now value here. So look at the expression CB. CB is a vector here. This has to be multiplied by scalar. So to multiply, since I have written in the matrix form. So now let us write CB. So CB as the row vector 0, 0 multiplied by the corresponding scalar of the first column. Because I want to write Z1 minus C1. So that is 1 minus 3 minus cj cj means now since it is z1 c1 so here also it is one we are putting j is equal to one so this means it is c1 and the c1 is the objective function cost that is given here that is 2 so this value is 2 so since we see that this multiply by 1 0 multiply by minus 3 it is 0 minus 2 so this value is minus 2 so here i am writing now z1 minus c1 as minus 2 2. So here Z1 minus C1 is minus 2. And similarly, let us find Z2 minus C2. In the Z2 minus C2 also, this is CB vector. If we have a confusion here reading it as a since we can see that this is a column vector. But actually this is CB transpose into the scalar. So you can this transpose it little understandable now. Multiplied by now the second column which is now second scalars. Minus 1, 1 minus the cost of the second decision variable that is x2 so in the objective function we see now x2 is cost is 3 so this is minus 3 again this product is a 0 so 0 minus 3 is equal to minus 3 so this value is minus 3 and in the similar process we calculate this is equal to 0 now if you look at the table you can see from the objective function this is simply negative of what we already have the objective function if here it is 2 this is minus 2 if here it is 3 this is minus 3 and for the other value these were 0 so this is also 0 and the reason being because cb vector is a 0 in the first stage cb is a 0 so cb into scalar so whatever be the scalar this quantity is a 0 in the initial table minus cj so this would be same as minus cj for initial bfs whenever we have considered in the initial bfs as only slack variables so we can again see the simplex table layout we have we do write here the basic variable here we write xb xb is the solution of the basic variable all the basic variable we write here here we write their solution so it is xb1 xb2 and so on xb3 here we write all the scalars there we write zj minus cj this is the value for z this is the value of z here we write all the decision variables and now note that this side is the solution of the decision variable so they have to be greater than or equal to zero so we remember in the linear programming problem we said all the non-negative restriction that means decision variable should be non-negative so this side ensure the feasibility and we will look for the feasibility criteria in the next video. And this side because there is an involvement of the Z. So this will ensure the optimality criteria. Now in the next video I will explain what is the optimality criteria and what is the feasibility criteria.